We've had a lot of really fun experiences this year, but one thing that's always very special is working with a guest artist to get to play with somebody, uh, to get to see sort of what it looks like on the other side of the official sort of training period, but then the 20 years post-college where we're still practicing, we're still growing, we're still learning. The guest we have today has a fun story, and we're gonna kinda allow some movement around and make sure that he's comfortable uh, we're here in the front before we bring him out. But this is a big connection to my life. Uh, we've actually shared a lot of different spaces, uh, but we didn't actually officially meet until two years ago. We both taught at a string music camp that was run by our former teacher uh, in Boise, Idaho. And he was this legend in my mind, because we both went to the University of Idaho, but he graduated in 96, and I came in 98. And so I would be in lessons, and my doc, my, doc, uh, my teacher, who's, we call him Doc, and he's from the 60s, and his, his language definitely sounds like, it's like, hey man, you know how Eric used to do it? And I kept hearing this name, Eric. Eric, and I knew that I, based on that comment, I wasn't Eric. And, I was trying to become Eric, and he's like, yeah, man, Eric will practice every night in the music building, man, every night. I'm like, okay, I'll practice every night in the music building. And then, and then he said, you know, when Eric learned this etude, it took him about a month, and then after a month went by, he's like, that's okay, man, sometimes it takes three months. <laughs> and after three months, he's like, that's all right, sometimes it takes six. <laughs> And so he was this sort of legend in my mind who I'd never met, but I knew was a phenomenal cellist because everyone who had worked with him knew that he was a phenomenal cellist, and he has been for, for his, his whole career, but it's a career that was really dedicated to the craft of becoming an excellent musician. Uh, for the last 20 years, after he received his undergrad, his master's, and his doctorate in cello performance, he's been teaching at Minot State University. Bonus points for anyone who can find that on a map. Hey, all right, North Dakota, there we go. There's the other seven people from the States, good. Um, that's great, and he's been there, and what's really interesting about these colleges, you know, we think about Stanford, we think about Berkeley, we think about these names, but there's these incredible professors at all of these universities, and they're at San Jose State, we have these great teachers, we have one of our great teachers here in the, in the audience today. Um, these institutions have dedicated faculty and they're taking care of kids in ways that sometimes the name brand schools just can't do it because they're doing their research, they're doing their tours, they're getting their papers done. And when he and I studied at the University of Idaho, we were taken care of, we were freshmen growing up, we got to have really, we had teachers who wanted to be in Moscow, Idaho, didn't need to travel and tour, weren't gone, we always got our lessons, we had all sorts of opportunities to play, we had a very dedicated faculty. So he's been at Minot State, and basically if you're the faculty, the college faculty in Minot State, that means you do everything for the 50,000 people in that town. Because that means every parade, every musical, every orchestra concert, you're involved. So he is the music man of Minot State, of North Dakota, and he's such a humble and kind individual, just constantly giving and trying to find ways to make music. So much so, he's like, sure, I can play the Four Seasons concert. But I have a concert in North Dakota on Saturday, so I'll have to catch a 6 a.m. flight. Is that okay? <laughs> I said, yeah, <laughs> that's fine. So he flew in at 9 p.m. We On Wednesday, we hung out for a considerable amount of time, just kind of catching up. He came all day Thursday to work with the kids, all day Friday. Everyone in the orchestra has benefited from his attention and his care. Uh, he's been following my schedule, so we've been doing 12 to 14 hours a day of music, and he's here again tonight to play for you on a very special piece that's being premiered here on the West Coast. It's had a couple performances in the, on the, in the Midwest side, but we haven't had any here on the coast, West Coast coast is the best coast, so we're glad to have that premiere here tonight, and it's on an electric cello, so you're going to get to see a new instrument, you're going to see how an instrument can be used differently, and also really cool, the composition is by his composer and saxophonist son, with the same, similar name, Eric Michael Anderson, uh, who will get to watch this video, and is going to fly out in May when we do it again, so if you are like, wow, I want to hear this again, you'll be able to, because Eric will be coming back in May to do more teaching in the Bay Area, which is really exciting. So there's who we have tonight. Can you go like this? <gasps> I know, I know. It's pretty special. It's pretty special. And the students are doing what's considered a high school version of this. There's a full orchestra version, a high school version, and a middle school version. He's like, so you want the middle school version? I said, no. <laughs> like the high school version, because this is what we're aspiring to do, is to be excellent in every way, and if they practice consistently and they help each other, we can do, we can do hard things, we can do this. And so tonight you get to hear a really interesting uh, orchestral arrangement, lots of great things for them to lean into, and 
you get to hear Dr. Eric Anderson. Please welcome him to the stage.